Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Blaine Edwards, and today we are joined by Stephen Ward, founder of Vi Finance, a DeFi platform and ecosystem on Cardano, which aims to be easy to use and accessible for everyone. So, Stephen, cheers for coming on the show. That's an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you for having me. No worries at all. Um, really looking forward to this. Uh, you're Australian, uh, which is kind mm-hmm. of cool to see. I'm, I'm not an Aussie myself. I'm from New Zealand, but grew up pretty much in Australia. So it's good to see some more Aussies in the space, first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, there are many of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's quite a bit I want to talk about with via finance. There's kind of a lot to the ecosystem and a lot of kind of fun concepts, well, more than fun, valuable concepts. Uh, so I'd like to touch on that. But before we dive into uh, the via finance ecosystem, can you do a brief introduction mm-hmm. around who you are and also how you got mm-hmm. involved with this beautiful world of crypto? Yeah, of course. Uh, So my background professionally was as a trader. Um, I started working in a hedge fund, moved into financial advice within investments. That's kind of a broad overview. Um, After working, and I was working in the industry for six years. Um, From there, like I started in in crypto fairly early, 2017. So I began in crypto probably the year after I began at the hedge fund where I was a bonds trader. So I specialize in short-term interest rates. Um, that's the front end of the bonds markets. Uh, they're called the Aussie notes, Aussie American treasuries and the Bundeslash, which are the German treasuries, as well as the pound sterling. Um, and I fell in love with crypto just because the markets that I, would, I was playing in were always very slow. So bonds move maybe... You know, if they move 0.1 of a percent in a day, that's like a wild day. That's, that's like, massive. oh, God. <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell has just happened? <laughs> Something in the world has just really collapsed. Um, and then by starting to play, I actually started by moving into currencies first because bonds and currencies are very closely related. Um, and then I played around with currencies a bit. And then from there, it was just a really natural progression to hit crypto. Um, Mm -hmm. it was in 2017 when everything was booming, I sort of jumped in, made a bit of money, watched it all disappear and evaporate. And I was like, wow, that was really fun while it lasted. (laughs) Um, And then instead of doing what a lot of people did, which was forget about it and pretend it didn't exist. I just kept knuckling away at it for the next five years. Um, and then about, uh, almost a year ago now, um, probably, yeah, yeah. Almost a year ago now. Wow. Uh, I was decided that I've actually got the ability and capacity to do this all for myself. So I just started doing it all for myself. Um, And then when I started doing it all for myself, I realized the best way to do it for yourself isn't to trade. Trading is fantastic, but it's really only focused on you. I wanted to make a project and actually do something, you know, become an integrated member of the community and make something better for the world because I had a lot of ideas. So I started implementing some of those ideas and here we are. Interesting. (laughs) But before I ask what Vi Finance is, you said an interesting thing about you kind of had this realization that, you know, maybe I can kind of get involved in this space myself mm-hmm. using my own skill set. Was there like a a moment where you came to that realization or was it kind of like more like of a gradient? It was more of a gradient, to be honest. Like building up yeah. the guts to leave work was a tough one. Um, and it was weird because it I was actually, there was a point where I was earning much more money from trading than I was from work. Um, and even at that point, I still wasn't very willing to sort of make that move just because there is something nice about the stability of an income, you know, and I was on a very good income, so I can't really argue with my income either. Um, and just being able to sort of wake up, go into work, do your work, go home. You know, I found the job fairly easy, fairly straightforward. It was easy, but at the end of the day, you just got to, it, what really changed was my willingness to do something for me. Hmm. It's like, I was I was getting sick of doing stuff for other people, you know, making money for others, doing work for others, doing X for somebody else. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I realized that, no, I do have the capacity to do it for myself. And, you know, now that I'm still 28 years old, I've got quite a few years of experience behind me because I've worked hard, but at the same time, I've still got that ability or I'm still young enough to not say I've wasted my opportunity. Hmm. I, cause I don't have a wife and kids yet. As soon as that happens, all of a sudden it's a lot harder changes to leave a stable game. job. Yeah. <laughs> it changes the game. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your, this was my your responsibilities, uh, change at that point in time. Oh, and my responsibilities <laughs> even now, you know, I've been watching them grow for the last six years. Every year there's a new one that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. <laughs> right. And 
that it, it hits that point where I just realized if I don't make that jump, I'm going to have to do continue working for the rest of my life because responsibilities mm. will be there. Mm. Um, so here, here we are. I did the jump, T- took the yeah, leap. You did it the jump. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of like that little detail there because I think there's probably a few people listening or at least in the space where the on that cusp of maybe taking that jump and uh there's a bit of friction there for a reason but if you decide mm. to take that jump you know p- potentially the grass is greener on the other side so yep. obviously everyone everyone do do you first and foremost um but not financial exciting. advice not a fun, not financial advice yes thank you for that disclaimer <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's cool speaking to people like yourself and other people in the space who um i guess took that leap and are giving it a go uh so mm. speaking of taking that leap and giving it a go uh what is mm-hmm. why finance absolutely so why finance is uh my my solution to what i found was one of the biggest problems in DeFi, which was the capacity for newcomers to engage um when when confronted with decentralized finance and i'm a rather experienced trader i found that the actual systems themselves as advanced and beautiful and fantastic as they are, they're not designed for someone to be able to come in and say, Oh, I know what I'm doing here. Click a button. Let's go. Um, Between making errors that cost a lot of money. uh, Oh God, making errors that cost money. If you've ever (laughs) engaged in liquidity pools um, and conducting and just essentially just getting your head around how the system works. There's a, there's a big learning curve, right? So within that, I thought to myself, it's, it's strange that there's that we do have auto harvesters. Have you ever heard of an auto harvester? That's a uh, liquidity aggregator, like harvest or yearn. Yeah. And it's self like comp- compounding. Does that, yeah. is that part yeah. of it as well? Um, that's part of it. That's part yeah. of it. So essentially you put it in and then they manage it for you on their platform, on other platforms, right? So you'd put your money into yearn and then they would take that money from yearn and they would invest it into one inch or sushi right? And then they would compound that for you. But the problem is if you go to any of these sites, they're in, their actual interface is just as complex as any of the DEXs that they're interacting with underneath. So whilst they're, trying to, whilst they're trying to aggregate it all to make it simpler, the actual interface doesn't become any simpler. So what we've basically are designing is an auto harvester to be as simple as possible to allow users that have got zero experience in the space to be able to engage with DeFi as comfortably as possible. The concept is that we break it down into a low risk, medium risk, and a high risk. And then the auto harvester does everything in the background, right? You would just, mm -hmm. so you would just deposit it into the vault. You would receive your LP token to represent your ownership of that vault. And then from there, the auto harvester and our neural net actually manages the harvesting and the yield from that. Now, um, yeah, please. Sorry. Yeah, so question? just just quickly on that. So that some of the, the key, one of the key components to that is making it as noob friendly as possible, I guess. That's it. That's and it. And just minimizing the the barrier to entry for anyone that wants to participate. And the thing That's absolutely uh, it. you keep mentioning, like a click of a button, uh, like you almost want to be able to participate with one, two, three clicks and then kind of set it and yes. forget it type, type of thing. Literally yeah. it. So the but way that I, like I wanted how to be. You had, I like how you had these a layer of like customization in it as well. So you could say, I want, mm-hmm. I want to go low risk, medium risk, or I want to degen. And you have these options mm-hmm. uh, and whatever That's your it. risk tolerance, you have an easy, you're a couple of clicks away to, to doing that. That's absolutely it. And in fact, if you ever mm. used an app like Raise? No. Have you ever used Raised spaceships? Um, oh, Acorns? yes, yes, yes. Are they round up your yep. spare cash and stuff? that's the one and then they invest yeah. it for you right so we kind of want our auto it's not going to be a roundup of the spare cash of course because we don't really do that in crypto um <laughs> but we want it we want the interface to be similar to that this is what we're yeah. starting, kind of going for people that don't really have much much experience within in um, engaging with that investment to be able to just pick a low medium high risk and then let the machine do its job but gotcha. this is this is where the this is where I think is what my favorite part of this system is really what we are initially launching with. So this will be launched in about six months time, those auto harvesters, but our initial launch is actually going to be a Dex. If you can imagine like pancake or imagine like sushi or imagine Uniswap, right? Mm -hmm. We are launching with a Dex with the standard Dex functions and our second stage, once we have our Dex and our auto harvester all released 
is to construct a learning management system, an LMS. And the concept of that LMS is to take users who are using our auto harvester, so our top layer, and to actually give them the skills to be able to engage with the decks underneath and actually manage it themselves. Because it's all good and well that we can do it for them, but the real power is in doing it yourself. Yeah. And we want to essentially take people on that journey. Mm. Interesting. And that definitely aligns with the, I guess, the blockchain ethos. But what you're doing mm -hmm. is providing both uh, options. Um, yes. You, you're talking about LMS, the auto harvester, and the DEX. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. we can have a look at the, the, the ecosystem uh, as a whole. So if you've yeah, got a absolutely. little graphic. Um, I certainly do. Let me just press the button. We can break that down. Beautiful. So here is the full graphics. Now, this is, this is a little bit intimidating at first, but don't let it intimidate you. In our white paper, we do break it down each one. But just think of this top section as an auto harvester. This is what I was talking about in the first place. This bottom section is a DEX. New users use our auto harvester, and we provide them with an educational layer to be able to use the DEX themselves. And then what ties it all together is our Vibar, which we actually haven't spoken about yet. So the Vibar is our distributive mechanism, and I'll pull out our Vibar. This is our Vibar. This is the distributive mechanism for all holders of our token. So if you engage with our auto harvester and you allow us to invest on your behalf, 15% of the harvest from the auto harvester is given to our bar, which means if you stake our token BiFi at the bar, you share 15% of the profits from the auto harvester. Mm. Similarly, we also take 0.05% of all the swaps that take place on the decks and we share the income from the fees of the swaps. And we share that as Wi-Fi to the people staked at the bar. So essentially we're creating an ecosystem where newcomers engage through the top layer, which is the auto harvester. Experienced users can engage in the bottom layer, which is the DEX. And then people who earn our token for engaging in our ecosystem can stake it at the bar and share in all the income that's generated through both of those layers. Okay. Okay. So that via bar from what you've talked about mm -hmm. so far is getting fueled by or injected with money from the auto harvester. Yep. And the decks. Yes. Correct. Is there, right. are there other injection avenues? Uh, we're look, that's the big thing that we're working on, right? We want to construct other injection avenues. The first one that we're looking to construct after we've built the ecosystem, by the way, is international markets, which is going to be a more formalized version of my current proprietary trading firm. We want to convert that into a hedge fund. And this takes me back to my spaceships example, right? Okay. We want to create, we want to create an ecosystem that allows users of all levels to engage. Here, we've got the auto harvester for people that are interested in crypto and want to learn how to use crypto, but don't have the knowledge yet. They engage in our top layer of our crypto. The second layer, the DEX, is for the people that know what they're doing and want to engage on a more serious level, manage their own liquidity, manage their own impermanent risk, and manage their own harvesting, do their own compounding, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But international markets is where we want to create an app, much like spaceships, where people can just invest a little bit of fiat at a time, and then we take that fiat and we run it through the auto harvester. And here's the auto harvester that you can see there. Interesting. For them. And we just represent that to them through the platform as fiat. Right. Oh, okay. So that's so you're so that's essentially... injecting fiat into a crypto mm -hmm. mechanism, and then outputting, mm -hmm. or returning fiat. the profits back in fiat. Exactly for the users that recognize the advantage of investing in crypto, but don't have the skills, the know-how, or necessarily the will mm. to want to engage in it themselves. So to build this entire ecosystem is a two-year process. This is going to be two years to set it all up. Right. What we're launching with is going to be our DEX and our bar. Our DEX and our bar, we're hoping to launch with mid to late October on the Cardano ecosystem. And then once the Cardano ecosystem starts turning on, that's when we begin training our auto harvester. And then within six months, we want to turn our auto harvester on as well. So we're looking okay. to have these top three here, the auto harvester by bar and DEX all running. We're hoping by March to April next year. Okay, so you you mentioned, tr did you say training the auto harvester? Can yes. you elaborate on, on what you mean by that? Absolutely. So our auto harvester is run is going to be run by our neural net. Okay. Um, now, 
a neural net is essentially a piece of AI software that trains itself to do things. So an example of um, anything really, you give it a set of data, you give it a result that you're interested in, and it teaches itself the best path to get to that result. So in our circumstance, we're giving it the data of what is the current return on certain liquidity pairs? What is the current impermanent risk across those liquidity pairs? And then optimize your placement of the funds to optimize my return. Okay. Um, now, neural nets, they're actually in the same structure of a brain. That's why they're called neural nets. They're, it's all about paths. So the computer will take a path, see if it's an optimal one, try a different path, and they'll do that over and over and over and over again. But that requires time, data, well, and a lot of time because you want to make sure that the neural net is trained to at least a good degree before you're going to be launching it for anyone to use. It takes about, we want to take three to six months to train it to make sure that we have it all working nice and nice and function, nice and perfectly, really. We don't want to launch before it's perfect. I'm a yeah. perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's nice to hear from like a, a, an investor <laughs> point of view. Um, the, you, you mentioned a uh, March, roughly next mm -hmm. year that you'd like to have all those different components running mm -hmm. for the auto harvester is that march target uh pre-training or post-training that's hopefully post-training march april post okay interesting so we so, want to launch we we want to really yeah, start yeah. um because we have to watch what the cardano ecosystem does yeah. right because we're going to be investing across multiple platforms in the cardano ecosystem with our auto harvester not just our own the entire concept yeah. being is that we are able to draw funds from across the Cardano ecosystem to create a continual upwards pressure on Wi-Fi because we continuously distribute those profits back to our bar. Um, as, we, as we look at how that ecosystem is developing, we're going to be able to give you a much firmer time. Like at the moment, I hope for March. But for example, if it's turning out that there aren't many farms on Cardano, and we get to February next year and there's only two functional farms on Cardano, we might not be coming out with a full low, medium, high risk structure. We might yeah, only yeah. be coming out with a limited structure. Okay. Right. There's, so it is there's things on, that we don't the... control. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, the auto harvester is like a, a farming aggregator mm -hmm. for those that are listening and may be very kind of new to this. Could you do a quick mm -hmm. rundown of, what you mean by farming it's very different I'll to the traditional I'll sense i'll stop um, that share. yeah so what what is farming in, in the crypto in the crypto world the crypto and, sense. yeah absolutely what are the different areas that you're looking to like aggregate from is it does it include mm -hmm. kind of staking um mm -hmm. as well because technically that's different to farming uh, yeah it is different to farming depending yeah, on who you ask um yeah it is it is certainly different areas that you're aggregating from yeah in ADA, it's certainly different because you're getting paid to stake to a node, whereas farming doesn't involve anything with a node. Gotcha. Um, now, farming is essentially the crypto's world's way of rewarding you for providing liquidity to functions or to machines that provide decentralized finance functions. Liquidity is just a fancy way of saying money, right? So in our circumstance, a DEX, a DEX is a decentralized exchange, which allows for the swapping of two currencies. If you were to swap between AUD and USD, right? And you go to a bank, a bank essentially has a big pile of AUD on one side, a big pile of USD on the other. You give them some USD, they put it to the USD pile, and then they pull out the AUD from the AUD pile and give it to you. Now, because a bank's an absolute ripoff, they're gonna give you a lot less AUD than they just added to their USD pile. That's how it works. That's yeah. how they make their money. Now, <clears throat> In these liquidity pools, we essentially have the exact same function taking place. You would add, for example, Wi-Fi on one side. That's our currency. And on the other side, you would add ADA. Now, people can come in from the front end and they can swap between these two currencies now because they can put in their Wi-Fi. It gets added to the Wi-Fi pile. It runs the price calculation and then it pulls out the ADA from the other side or vice versa. Put in ADA, runs the price calculation, pulls out Wi-Fi on the other side. Right now, if you add liquidities to these pools, projects reward you, such as ourselves, reward you for putting that liquidity into our ecosystem because you're going to have choices of multiple ecosystems on where to put your liquidity. So, 
what a project does is they offer you a return in their currency based on how much liquidity you have provided. So if you put in, let's say a thousand dollars, and then you stake that into our farm, we can then say, oh, we're going to provide you, let's say 115% of that thousand dollars as Wi-Fi over the next year. And then at any point in time, you can press the harvest button and then that Wi-Fi will arrive in your wallet. So you can mm -hmm. basically at will withdraw it. Gotcha, gotcha. And the farming is obviously quite uh, appealing to a lot of people because it's a way for people to put their crypto to work and earn mm -hmm. an extra extra bit of money okay. from it. Um, but what mm -hmm. you guys are doing is, I guess, taking that a step further and, and having a look at all the different farms out there in the Cardano ecosystem and then finding and the and aggregating the lot and finding you the best possible deal. And you're using mm -hmm. um, your neural network AI super mind mm -hmm. to come up with those calculations. That's exactly it. Gotcha. gotcha. And the, the other thing that I want to add as well is that we've also got that beautiful second layer for with ourselves that a lot of, uh, that a lot of projects don't we're in that you add provide liquidity by providing liquidity, you farm Wi-Fi. And then you stake the Wi-Fi that you farm to the bar to share in the fees that are generated across the entire ecosystem. So we've got that two-step function where you don't just have the um, generating Wi-Fi to farm and then sell it for a profit. You can actually take that Wi-Fi and then multiply it through a system that isn't just printing more Wi-Fi. It's actually a system that is taking that Wi-Fi through profits that are generated through the provision of a service. Yeah. Hopefully um, avoiding that pyramid type structure. You know that one where they put in money from the bottom and it just keeps yeah, going up like yeah, pancake. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I wouldn't want to say names. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the one kind of detail that I just want to um, clarify is wh when you are taking 15% from the auto harvester mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then giving that to the Vi, the, the, the Vi bar, Vi, Vi, Vi bar, bar, mm -hmm. Vi bar um, are you taking those profits you're taking those profits and then you're buying the Wi-Fi Wi from, from mm -hmm. the market. That's correct. From our, from okay. our liquidity pools. Yeah. So let's, so in the auto harvester, for example, most of the profits is going to be coming through at, in the local currencies in which they have harvested. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say we are harvesting on just as an example, meld, right. We're yep. going to be earning that income in meld. So our first step is of course to convert that meld to ADA and then convert that ADA to Wi-Fi. So then from the meld auto harvester, uh, from the meld auto harvester, I should, we probably won't have it like that. We won't have it like that, but I'm just using this as an example. Yep. From the meld auto harvester, you'd collect all your income from meld, convert all of that to Wi-Fi. Sorry, not all of it. Convert all of it to ADA. Then we give most of that ADA to the people that are in the, in the auto harvester, but 15% gotcha. of that ADA is converted to Wi-Fi. And then that 15% that's converted to Wi-Fi is then deposited to the bar to be distributed between all of those that have put their Wi-Fi at the bar. Gotcha. Okay. I right? think I'll, I think that makes sense in my Yep. So you've got that, so right. we've got that loop where we take where we aggregate income and then we share it to the holders of our currency through the bar. Yeah. So the, it's a closed loop, and that's really important. You're not just yep, rewarding people by printing new. No, dollars, it's a loop. Which is obviously it's actually the issue. opposite. It's the opposite of a closed loop. It's an open loop. We're taking it in and then we're distributing it back out rather okay. than letting people put it in and then just rotating it around, which is gotcha. what quite a few places may do. do. Okay. I hear. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of what other people may do, uh, you're a mm -hmm. Dex. There are other. I guess DEXs out there in the Cardano mm -hmm. ecosystem. What is your plan to, I guess, differentiate Wi-Fi from the rest of them? What's what's well, your kind first, of unique the, flavor? It's the it, we've got the liquidity the liquidity pool as well as the educational platform. So we've got quite a bit. I don't even think of the other DEXs as, as my competition, which is why we've got a we've got a farming and oh we've got a farm sorry we've got an announcement coming out with a few partnerships in a week or two. Um, okay, cool. And, I like that. Most, and mostly though, I don't think the decks see us as firm competition. Look, we're certainly in competition. We do have a decks, right? Um, 
but we think that we we can very much work together with those dexters because we have our auto harvester that we plan to be using to provide liquidity across the ecosystem not just to ourselves hmm. so we benefit by having a healthy ecosystem with more high functioning dexters right that benefits our auto harvester much better than just having us hmm. so it, it kind of puts yeah. us in the unique position yeah that point alone is um having that that aggregator which kind of talks to these other different uh, products mm -hmm. it almost incentivizes partnerships within other, mm -hmm. within the ecosystem which is which is cool i, I, I personally think uh, uh in these early days of cardano and this is the kind of the maybe like a more of a romantic kind of point of view but mm -hmm. it's quite nice um collaborating and working together yeah, it is as opposed to, um, and I say romantic, but actually it's probably practical to be honest, mm -hmm. especially in these mm -hmm. early days, there's probably um, more value when um, kind of working together during these early days and beyond, mm -hmm. who knows? We're in a mm -hmm. completely new world, like we're redefining things all the, the time. So the, the, way that, the way that I like to think about it within the Cardano ecosystem, for example, excuse me, we have a market cap of what, 84 billion at the moment? we've got a total of 60 70 maybe 80 projects there's more than enough for everybody to work together and make it a better place mm. Right? Mm. Our, our focus should be making it better for everybody not trying to extract value for ourselves and that's exactly what i'm trying to do with this ecosystem right it's about mm. creating a system that allows people to engage with this and hopefully change their lives as it has changed mine and to do it in a way that will assist them to do it as helpfully or as easily as possible, because this stuff shouldn't be complex, but unfortunately it's not easy. Yes. Yes. Um, if you're, if you've been around the space for a while, you can probably navigate through this, this world. If you've experimented with DeFi on, on other uh, blockchains, cause obviously mm -hmm. you can at the moment on, on Cardano. Um, mm -hmm. but there is definitely a learning curve and I'd love to mm -hmm. get to a point where I can just be like, Hey mom, go stake some um, X, Y, Z on X, Y, Z. And she's like, mm -hmm. yeah, just blah, blah, blah. What's the address? I'll do it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what's the address? Boom, boom. Connect yeah, wallet. Boom. Oh, my yes, art is I'm, already I'm... there. You put my art in there. Thanks, son. Stake. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, stake. What options do I have? I want to go op <laughs> maximize DJ category, please. <laughs> boom. Thank you. I'm an absolute raver. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's, and that's it. kind of where we want to be. Uh, and until yeah, we get to that point it. where it's just super seamless and you kind of just can do these things without uh, thinking about it, uh, mm -hmm. then we aren't quite there yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Until that point, we're still really, really kind of early, in my opinion. Um, exactly. But, uh, yeah, I think um, we're, look, we're making a lot that's of why, uh, advancements. That's why we're building very complex machinery to try and make that as simple as possible, mm. right? Mm. Because it's not it's not simple stuff that's happening but it can be made simple. And that's, yeah. that's what we're trying to do. And, and I should also add, that's why we've gone on, we've gone on the Cardano blockchain because Cardano is very much focused on bringing on newcomers from particularly underprivileged and unbanked members of the world, African nations, uh, Central American nations, Southeast Asian nations. And the expectation that there are going to be these new users coming in from countries that are very financially illiterate, to expect them to be able to engage with DeFi in a safe and effective manner, I think is a little bit of a stretch. Hmm. I mean, I worked in, I've worked in banking, I've worked in financial advisory. I know how much people who even have the education struggle with basic concepts, let alone having people that have never held a depositing account trying to understand um liquidity uh, impermanent uh, impermanent loss within liquidity management <laughs> like it's just it's not something that i can really imagine being very accessible to a lot of these people yeah and to really get the full impact of blockchain of cardano you know mm -hmm. you really need to be able to tap into all the different populations around the world um mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because this, this potentially can change the world. And if, if it's going yep. to change the world, it needs to change all different parts of it and all different people in mm -hmm. it. And that mm -hmm. comes with challenges. And one of those challenges is access. Um, mm -hmm. And that's access in a variety of different ways. DeFi, access to connectivity, which is world mobile. Um, mm -hmm. Access is a, is a huge one. I love world one. mobile. Yeah, love them too. World mobile, a great project.
Yeah. Um, shout out. Shout out, shout out. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's exactly okay, and that's exactly cool. correct, right? And that's what we're really looking. To, that's what we're we're really looking to push. That's why we went with Cardano as our blockchain because it's the only blockchain whose philosophy properly met the philosophy that I was trying to interesting to meet with my project. So that was one of my questions: was why why Cardano? And so for you, a big part of it was the philosophy, I guess, the and philosophy. the values. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The philosophy and the values. That was entirely it. Yeah, um, cool. and it was a much harder one to design on and to build on. It's turned out to be a lot more expensive, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about being able to meet the goals that you want to achieve. And I don't think the goals that I wanted to achieve would have been able to do on Ethereum, for example. Mm. Okay. I like it. Um, one other kind of talking about the values within in blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, one big part of it is, I guess, the community and this decentralization. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a plan to integrate community governance in some capacity uh, mm -hmm. in the Wi-Fi yeah, we, ecosystem? We certainly have. Yeah, we're going to be a governance token, essentially. So um, it does depend how long it takes for us to have the effective software to be able to manage governance on Cardano. I think that'll probably be six to eight months before we've got the effective like snapshots, voting systems. And because at the moment you can do it, but you do it through nodes. So you you don't really do it through a snapshot of the blockchain. Mm. Um or at least they don't have a centralized system that'll do it for you. You never know. Actually, the IOHK might release something like that pretty soon. As soon as we can, we're going to have governance, though. I can't give you a date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the point that I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to know that you're obviously thinking about it and and, and looking to implement it. You just, you just don't have oh, concrete dates or anything like that. No, no. And not more than looking to implement it, it's a core part of our um, tokenomic. We've actually got 8% of our token is restricted to the treasury, which yeah. is exclusively for the governance protocol to spend. Love it. Love it. And um, yeah, the white paper, obviously, the parts that we don't cover in this podcast, you can go check out on your website and check on the, mm -hmm. the white paper there and the light paper. I believe you've got two different options there. Yes. Um, the the roadmap so we've been talking about the the ecosystem and there's different um mm -hmm. i guess components to it and they're rolling mm -hmm. out in phases mm -hmm. can you talk about the roadmap for yeah for the sh i guess the short term um for this year yeah for sure for sure maybe so we are starting with of course launching with our decks and our bar uh we are hoping that's going to be coming in october um then from there we are going to be constructing out the auto harvesters as I described, we're looking at about six months for that. Um, after we've completed the auto harvesters, that's when we're really going to be uh, finalizing our learning management system. I've actually got a team working on that alongside while we're doing the auto harvesters. So they might be contemp more contemporaneous than after, but we'll give it up to a year for that. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we've just got to do all the licensing so we can set up the hedge fund properly, which will likely be another six months to a year. Hmm. because licensing is always fun <laughs> yeah with the traditional hedge fund um what's the the rationale for integrate because that's kind of like combining two different worlds mm -hmm. in a sense is it yeah uh, yeah, what's yeah, the it logic behind that? yeah yeah the logic is just so we can get it's honestly so we can achieve every vertical possible right so we've got people who are experienced with crypto and DeFi can engage with the decks people who are not experienced with crypto but want to learn can engage with the auto harvester and the learning management system. People that don't have the capacity to engage but still want to have got our hedge fund that they're able to do so with fiat. So we don't want to leave any vertical out of the, um, out of the equation, essentially. Gotcha. We want everyone to be able to, to be involved. Yeah, and that aligns with your access idea of maximizing, yes. I guess, the accessibility for anyone who wants to participate. Uh, and That's that exactly involves, it. I guess, looking at solutions in each of these worlds, I guess. And That's exactly it. And that's what, that's where my experience yeah. coming from a hedge fund, I think is really helpful. It allowed me, it's allowed me to sort of construct these solutions from a few different perspectives. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, you're exactly correct. It all, it's all born from that philosophy of accessibility. Mm -hmm. Um, can we talk about the, the team? So you're the, the founder, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what are the, who are the other members of the team that are, um, I guess, working on the, this, the wire finance ecosystem? Yeah. 
we've got a lot of team members now. Uh, we're actually going to be updating our team page soon to include our LinkedIn's. I actually don't have a LinkedIn yet, which is upsetting. I've just, I've been a trader. I've never needed to show off to employers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so I've got, in terms of development, we'll start there. We have Ryan Feltcamp is our lead engineer for the front end. Um, we're working with, I don't want to stuff up their name, but Ilium um, LLC, which are a consultancy out of Silicon Valley. And we have got five of their engineers full-time, two of their engineers part-time. Um, then there are full-time Haskell devs. Uh, we've actually mm. got a possible auditor as of next week. So that's exciting. exciting. That's, yeah. that's exciting. Nice. That's very exciting. Um, <laughs> and then we've got our AI devs. And the principal AI dev is actually my father. My father runs a um, statistical consultancy doing property trading, and he uses neural nets for property trading. So, nice. um, borrowing his skills to assist us with neural nets for DeFi trading. Um, hmm. and then the LMS is going to be managed, uh, by the whole team because we've all got experience within the DeFi world. So we're all sort of partaking in that and building out, you know, what's the information that we would have wanted to have known and what's the stuff that we would have wanted to have available to us when we first started. And then we're finding a way to put that out into, um, of extending that out into an actual course. And we're doing that with the help of, uh, honestly, my mother who has got a master's in pedagogy. She's a teacher. So I love, I love this to, family a flavor. Of, bit of a family affair going on here, getting yeah. my mother in for the teaching and my dad in for the maths. Yeah. <laughs> Just quickly on the, the LMS. Uh, yeah. Wait, this, what's, so that's learn, learning management, learning system? management system. Yeah. Gotcha. It's like when you go to university and you log into those things, that's the LMS. Oh, that's where I heard it from. Yeah, giving me flashbacks now that I've not missed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, how will people? So, will that be integrated like on your website, or will that kind of be Platform. like a separate yeah. thing? So, it'll likely be a separate site. It'll probably be integrated gotcha. through. Um, it'll it'll be like an extension to our site, like app.vifi or like you got those app sites. It'll be lms.vifi. Yep. Um, what we, the way that we want to design it is anyone who contains an LP token to our auto harvester. In other words, anyone who's put anything inside our auto harvester will get automatic free access to the LMS and there would like be no it. minimum amounts, right? Yeah. So in other words, if you've, been, if you've chosen to partake in our ecosystem, you get access to the learning management system by definition. And is there going to be some sort of, um, Wi-Fi qualification or like some sort of, or will it just I be, would, you kind of go through the system and. Whatever I want to. I want to create. The, that's the thing. I really want to. I really want to create a system where we do actually. If you know Khan Academy, where they have like little tests and they do all that kind of little stuff. Oh, Khan Academy. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Khan Academy. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Asad Asad Khan. I can't remember his first name now. Used to watch him on. Used to watch him do interviews. Uh, but we would love to implement a system like that where you do have like little tests or you do have little um, activities that you have to conduct. So at the end of it, we can actually say, "Hey, look, here's a piece of paper." that says to you, you understand the basics of DeFi. And it's not necessarily going to be a formal qualification. It's not going to be a diploma or something from an RTO. Mm. Um, but what it will be is just, you know, recognition for yourself saying that you've put in the time and you've put in the effort to learn these systems. And I think that's really important for anyone's achievement. Yeah. I imagine there's probably an interesting use case for an NFT in there somewhere. Um, oh, we're already playing with that one. That is definitely <laughs> something we're playing with. Um, well, yeah, be, that's going to be a lot uh, of fun. Under wraps at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see how you kind of integrate that because um, obviously NFTs, are, there's a lot of hype around them at the moment and mm -hmm. uh, we're only brushing the surface of what they, the use cases for them. Uh, and when you were just talking sure. about that, I was like, NFTs can fit in here somewhere. I don't know exactly what mm -hmm. it looks like, but it must be a, a role. <laughs> There the absolutely LMS. is. And, and, and you can also use like one example, you can use NFTs as an honor board, which would be fun. All the students that have completed it, get an NFT and then they get put up on, on a board. And that NFT hmm. is basically is the save, save of the name on the board. So you can just link back to that NFT. Hmm. Um, so you could use, so you could use NFTs literally as a storage mechanism there. Um, that's just one example. I love NFTs as well. I could talk about yeah. them for weeks. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, the, can we talk about the tokenomics? You, you brushed on it yeah, earlier please. with the, the treasury and the allocation for the treasury. Mm -hmm. Can you break down a bit more of the tokenomics and um, yeah, the tokenomics? Mm -hmm. For sure. So the tokenomics, so the to max supply is 450 million. 
Now that is going to be farmed out over where the emissions rate is going to be coming out over the next week, but it's going to be farmed out over the next four to six years. Um, so there's no rush on getting that out to people. That's the entire idea. Uh, that's 85% of the supply that's locked to our farm, right? Hmm. We've got the 8% that's locked to our treasury. We've got 1.5% to the ICO, an airdrop. We've got 2.5% to the team. So the team doesn't get much at all. We've got 2% going to listings. Unfortunately, listings just require about 2% of your supply. Um, and then, of course, we've got 1%, which is going to be fungible. That's essentially for the business to be able to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So a total of 3.5% that goes to the team in the business, and then a total of 80, 96.5% that goes to the community and the treasury. Yeah. And the so the the a, a big chunk of that is getting slowly released over the next few years through, yes, through farming. Yes, that's correct. The what, majority of it. So the majority, we're launching yeah. the, the supply at launch is going to be around 6.25 million tokens, we're hoping, as long as we finish this ICO off with with all of it being sold. Okay, around six so, mil, six, seven mil, yeah. around there. Yeah, okay. around six, seven mil, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, um, and Actually, I would like this. to add, so far, as of this moment, we have got a total amount on our ICO sold of uh, 4.6 million tokens so far. Okay, 4.6 mil out of how... What's your 6. target? 6.15, 6.15. Okay, so that was my next question. How can people buy the token and it's, so there's still an opportunity at this point Yes, in time. there's still an opportunity for three days before the ICO ends and that's by going to www.vifi.io forward slash buy. You do have to complete KYC. I wish that was a choice of ours. Unfortunately, that's what the lawyers tell us and we do what the lawyers say. <laughs> yeah. And um, once you complete KYC, just send ADA through to the address that appears and you'll receive your Wi-Fi in 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, nice. I have gone through that process myself and it was very kind of oh, seamless. Oh, wow. Thank you. So, I didn't know um, that. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for the, 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 the process being quite smooth. Um, not financial advice. <laughs> not financial if advice. If, please, if, actually, can I, I, will, I will say the formal one. Please be aware any advice given in this um, interview has been general advice only. No advice given takes into account your personal circumstances. Please do take into account your personal circumstances before investing any money on anything that was said during this program. Thank you for That's that. I might have to copy that <laughs> and repeat that in all my, all my podcasts at the beginning somewhere. <laughs> is it, is, is, um, it's funny how we have to... Um, obviously put mm. in these disclaimers, but it's... Uh, when I was working at the bank, I used to say that pretty much every phone call. Just, yeah. Please be aware, anything I say does not take your personal circumstances into account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's important. Okay, cool. So that's how people can get hands on the, the token. Um, yep. I think we've, we've got a couple more questions just to, to kind of close off, but is, are there any mm -hmm. points that I, I missed that you want to touch on before we... Not Michelle. really. We pretty much covered. We pretty much covered it all. Thank you so much for letting me talk about it. Just having yeah, cool. me waffle on for an hour. No, it was uh, really enjoyed the the conversation as well. It was it was um, flowed quite well. It was good. Yeah, thank um, you. It was fun. Uh, how can people connect and support Vi Finance? Mm -hmm. uh, there's two ways to do so. Uh, of course, follow us on all our socials. Um, on our Discord, I, we run a trading education channel on our Discord. So our Discord does go a little bit deeper than just talking about Wi-Fi. So if you'd like to learn a little bit about trading, I've got, uh, we you know, share tidbits from the hedge fund. Um, it's quite, it's quite an in-depth trading channel. We've got a new trader chat and an, ex and a trader chat. The trader chat does get quite technical sometimes. So okay. come and enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, supporting us more than anything, just give us a shout out. Let us let people know that you like what we're doing. Um, I love anything on any kind of link on Twitter. If you just say these guys are doing good work, it's great to just hear our name and hear people recognize us and get our name out there. Because at the moment, that's what we want to do. Mm. Okay. We nice. think we've well, got the system. Yeah. We want the people now. Yeah. Well, the, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the people are there. They just need it. Um, learn about what you guys are doing. That's it. And yeah. that's it. We're just, it's, that's a mild unfortunateness of having a complex system is that it's a little bit more difficult to understand, but when all the pieces come together and you see the Lego will fit it, it all makes sense. Yeah. I mean, when you're going through that and I, I read the white paper, like there is, um, you know, a bit of complexity there, but 
after you're explaining it, like you can see how this puzzle can piece together and it does, mm -hmm. it does seem to, to, to make sense, uh, at least in my, yeah. how I process, uh, process and it. Thank, and thank you. That's why I did this interview. I want it to make sense. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Final question, brother. Um, Please. I, I love to ask, ask this question at the end because it's very curious for me mm -hmm. hearing everyone's uh, response, but what excites you the most about the future of Cardano? Um, I would say what excites me the most about the future of Cardano is bringing people that are currently unbanked into the financial world. Um, there is always, and this has been the case throughout history, once you improve accessibility to resources, the world goes through a boom. Um, once you allow people access to more commodities, the world can improve at a faster pace. One of the fairest and quickest ways to improve access to commodities is to improve access to financial resources. And one of, and I believe Cardano is going to be one of the best systems we've ever had to bring financial resources to those that are currently incapable of accessing it themselves.